Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Rowtree, and I'm a director with Projects RH, based in Sydney, Australia. I have been asked to speak this evening about provisions, not the sort of provisions that accountants talk about or lawyers look at, but food, which goes back to the Latin meaning of the word. Australia has had a long association with food and water. Going back in history, in 1770, James Cook found the east coast of Australia as he was sailing and decided it was a great place to build a colony. He took this idea back to the UK and in 1788, Governor Philp was sent out with the first fleet. On their way to Australia, they stopped in South Africa and they collected Spanish Merinos. And the intention was to bring those to the new land. Governor Philp arrived at Botany Bay and decided that he would look for a better location. He moved a few kilometres north and into what is now known as Sydney Harbour because it had fresh water upriver. When he arrived, he'd come with military staff, their families, free settlers and convicts. Importantly, they had to be fed and watered. So he had to quickly start agricultural and horticultural activities. This was the beginning of Australia's first export industry. The early years of Australia are associated with the growth of the wheat, sheep and wool industries. And these provisions were exported basically across the modern British Empire. If we advance forward 200 years, Australia continues to import capital and to export food. Australia produces sufficient high quality food that it can feed at its own living standards, not just the 27 million people live, who live here, but about another 70 million people. So Australia is a premium exporter of proteins, whether it be lamb, beef, or legumes and nuts. Australia has the climate which allows it to grow these about 11 months of the year. And it's because of the long, long coastline of Australia where we can grow fruit beginning in the, in the northern part of Queensland and running across the year down to the bottom of Tasmania. It is said that Australia is one of the few countries in the world that can supply strawberries for 11 months of the year. Australia has continued to import capital and people have invested in particularly protein and in the last 25 to 30 years, particularly in beef. Australia is the largest exporter of seaborne beef. And most of this is quality beef that goes into the Asian markets. But it also does produce specialty products. It produces Wagyu beef for the Japanese market. As Australia continues to grow and the world wants more and better food, the real price of meat and other proteins is increasing. This is driving the demand for investment into Australian agriculture. Also, over the last 10 years, there's been a significant development of horticulture. Our friends in our neighboring countries in Asia are now wanting fresh fruit and vegetables, and they're prepared to have them flown to them. At Projects RH, we deal with lots of inquiries and contracts with people wanting to invest and procure beef and horticulture. We are very fortunate that we work with Bill Cameron and Chris Todd and have so for many years in sourcing 
investment opportunities for people into agriculture and horticulture. What we're seeing is a great interest in the opportunities Australia offers and the reliability is as shown in the, during the COVID-19 crisis. I hope this shows you a brief insight into the strength of Australia in the ability to supply provisions and the, how we welcome foreigners to invest in this sector. I'm Paul Rowtree and I'm a director with Projects RH in Sydney.